is that whenever we mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, the hadith tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers us alone. And if the servant remembers Allah, if a servant remembers Allah in a group, then Allah remembers that person in a group. Which means Allah mentions you in a group. How amazing. What group is that with angels? and What group does that consist of? Your name was mentioned in the heavens literally the whole time you've been reading. And the louder and more passionate you've been reading, the more likely and the more reality uh, that you were remembered in. So shall I take this one off? And so the more we're remembered, and how incredible is it that we were remembered in the heavens? Is there a greater honor for us to be able to do that? Is there a greater honor for us in, in our lives than to do anything other than to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Nothing at all. And in every moment of our lives that we spend that's not in the remembrance of Allah and in the remembrance of the Prophet sallallahu we will all regret that time. Any time in your life that's not in the remembrance of Allah and in the Prophet ﷺ, you will regret that time. And any time you do spend in the remembrance of Allah and the remembrance of the Prophet ﷺ, which was this time here, this time, and one of the things that you have to remember, as on the Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the physics are completely different on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So even the Quran recitation that you do takes form on the Yawm Al-Qiyamah. It comes in a form. Even the remembrance of Allah that you do here on the Yawm Al-Qiyamah, it comes as a form. And Imam Al-Ghazali says that all of the hours that you spent in will be like boxes. They will be like boxes. And every moment that was spent that wasn't done in the remembrance of Allah, he said you will regret that. But the times that were spent in the remembrance of Allah, they will be like boxes that have beautiful fragrances inside them and wonderful lights. And these will be very useful on the Day of Judgment. It's almost like a Christmas Christmas Eve. <laughs> on the Day of Judgment, you get all these boxes and all these wonderful things inside that. And it's not because of his Christmas, because of his Mawlid. <laughs> Meaning it's not because of the celebration of other things, except the celebration of the mercy for the universe. That's what it is. That's one of the many reasons why we celebrate this time and the remembrance of the life of the Prophet is we can re because we remind ourselves of the most integral part of our tradition and the integral part of all of humanity, all of existence is the Prophet That because of the Prophet Allah SWT gave us a chance to exist and to receive, receive his intercession and to make it to paradise. That's how fortunate we are. And that Prophet wasallam, who was he and how was he? He was that messenger of God wasallam, who woke up in the middle of the night and went out and made his wudu and he prayed and he prayed remembering us. That's who he is. That's who he was. That's who he still is. And that's what Allah SWT says in the Quran and this is a verse that you read, you read the shimmering light. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ Indeed, a messenger has come from amongst you. Indeed, a messenger has come from amongst you. عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُمْ And grievous to him is that which afflicts you. Grievous to him is that which takes your attention in life. What worries you day by day. Every day your life goes on, you have concerns and worries for things. And he sees every single one of those worries and it's grievous to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's happening right now. It's not happened back then. It's happening right now. Azizun alayhi ma'anittum harisun alaykum and he is watchful over you. Bil mu'mineena ra'ufur rahim and with the faithful ones, with the believers, he is compassionate and he is merciful. This is one of the verses that we read. What does it remind us? It reminds us of the important principles of connecting with the Prophet ﷺ who is already connected to you. Nobody in this world will be able to offer you any type of solace, any type of safety, any type of comfort like the Prophet ﷺ has already done for you. In fact, your desire to love, your desire to cry, your desire to get excited, your desire to get depressed 
was created so that it was for the Prophet peace be upon him. That's what it was there. Mawlana talks about tears and he says that these tears that people cry, he says these tears, do you think that they were created for you to cry over PlayStation? To cry over things that you missed out on in life, I didn't get the job, she didn't text me back, blah, 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 wah, wah. He said, do you think they were, cried, they, they were created for you to cry over creation? They were created not for your nafsi worries and concerns. They were created so that you remember your beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa That messenger who did so much, who we are completely indebted to, the whole of this world was transformed. The whole of this world was transformed by his 23 years here. And he changed the face of this earth. I once upon a time was in, uh, in school, I was teaching. And there was a friend of mine who was also a teacher. And he was called into the office with the senior leadership team. And then he came to me and he didn't have a good meeting. Yeah, he was in trouble for something. As just one of the not very good. But he was a good teacher, but he was in trouble for something. And he came to me and he said, "How dare she speak to me like this? Who does she think she is that she could speak to me like that?" I thought, "All right, half a sub, all right, chill out, half a sub. No need to get too excited." He said, "Nah, who, how dare she speak to me like this? Does she not know whose we are?" So he said to me, he goes, does she not know who we belong to? We're from the Ummah of the Prophet or something like, how dare she talk to me like that? <laughs> like how much of an identity, how much your identity will become the more and more you connect yourself with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine what, what sort of a, 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 a possibility can come out of you and you can be, if you remember, how would the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be with me if he was to see me in the situation that, that I'm in right now? I'm preparing for my exams, but if the Prophet saw me, what would he say to me? He would say, oh, study a little bit, just a little bit more. And that will make you go above and above and above. You start a business. What would the Prophet say to you? And imagine what, <laughs> what advice you'd get. Just like that. <laughs> Whatever these situations are, every single situation, the more you are connected with the Prophet وسلم, the more transformation that will happen to you. The more you mention the Prophet Sallallahu and you connect yourself to the Prophet Sallallahu the more amazing you will be in life. But you have to make that connection and you have to bring the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi into your life as much as you can. So what are the ways in which, in which we do this? What are the ways in which we connect ourselves to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The most fundamental way and the most, and one of the best ways to do this is to study the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's the seerah, the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How he went about in life. The idea of seerah is how he went. Uh, the word seerah means to go. How his life was, how he came in this life, and how he went about. And once you get into that, that's why you read this, especially when you read the translation of it, or if you understand the Arabic of it. It's like a, it's the whole point of a mawlid reading is. To remind yourself of that story, and one of the and there's three really main parts to the seerah that I want to just I, I try to spend uh, some time trying to remind myself first and foremost, and then if anybody else wants to take benefit for themselves, they can. The first thing is that the, the first to understand that the seerah has three main sections to it. The first section of the seerah is known as the Meccan period. The second, the the the, the last part of the seerah is known as the Medina period. So you have the Meccan time and you have the Medina times. What time in the middle of it? What's the time in the middle of it? There are there's Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. There is the Meccan period and then there's a key thing which is immigration, the migration that took place. The migration was of different types of migration. There was a migration to the uh, the to Abyssinia, and then there was the migration to uh, Medina. I think, should we stay for the Adhan? No. Should we carry on? Carry on. So, the, the Meccan and the Medinan. Now, wh why is this so significant? First and foremost, you cannot con make that connection with the Prophet if you don't understand how he lived his life. The whole point of the Prophet as Sayyidina Aisha said that his character was the Quran. 
He was the Quran, walking Quran. Meaning you want to understand this tradition, you have to look at the life of the Prophet. And the life of the Prophet will indicate to you these major points. And you have to ask yourselves, where are you in relation with that? Most of the Muslims will look for creating a Medinian society. All of these Muslim groups, political groups, whatever they may be, countries, etc. They all look for creating a Medinian society. The Medinian society, you cannot make a Medinian way of living if you don't have what? The Meccan hearts. If you don't put that personal shift of striving against the nafs and putting that shift of personal prayers and personal obligations if you don't put that shift in it's very difficult to call for a Medina isn't it because if you bring in a Medinan society and you have corrupt hearts what happens if you call for a Medinan society a, a, a law a society with all these amazing laws but you don't have hearts that can maintain those laws what's that called some call it Pakistan Eh? and many of the other Muslim countries because they don't put the real heart shift which is working on the hearts and that example of Pakistan that I said here is not just exclusive to Pakistan or the Muslim countries it's even households you cannot escape expect a Muslim household a Medinan household if the hearts are not Meccan so the first thing you have to do really if you want to pay respect to the way of the Prophet you have to have to have to, have to understand what the Meccan period is all about. So my advice to all you young lads is this, and if the older guys do this, good for them. Do the seerah, whether you do an audio, uh, there's lots of wonderful audio versions like Sheikh Hamza Yusuf's uh, online lectures, there's Sheikh Ibrahim Asiyaf, uh, and many other scholars as well that you could look at. Maybe you do have seerah classes here as well. I'm not sure. When you do seerah, A, wear your best clothes in a seerah class and perfume yourself with the, in the Sira class before you go to the class. You try that and tell me how your classes go. It will not be like any normal class. A. So be as if you're in the presence of the Prophet B. You will find in your life the parallels of the story of Makkah will, the parallels will be in your life. You will find that most of us who live out here in the UK other than pockets of Luton and Birmingham yeah most of us have a Meccan experience, some of us have a Madani experience out here with all the Muslims around us. Yeah. But we generally have a Meccan experience. You start to understand what it means to be in a Meccan, in a Meccan society when you're not the dominant group. How is that? How do you live like that? How difficult is it for you to keep your Islamic identity when people are offering all these other identities? That is when you create that personal struggle and shift. If you study the seerah and you study as if you are living in the time of the Prophet the fruits for you in your life will be amazing. I promise you, especially as young people, you will have you'll have about three options of success when you're young. Either you're a tough guy, or you're a funny guy, or you're just a cool guy. Right? That's generally the three options. If you're not one of those three, it's very difficult to make it through your school years. Yeah, you just gotta gotta, gotta get by. Right? Well, there's a fourth option that it, that tops the first three. And that is, you use your Islam. Your Islam will give you even more of an honor. That will It will give you strength like the tough guys. It will give you the lightness when everybody else is worrying about X, Y, and Z. You are with the Prophet wasallam. Do you know what it means to have the Prophet in your heart? And to carry the Prophet in your life? It's basically, you know the story of when... Uh, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to, when they went to as, a, as a young baby with Sayyidah Halima when she carried him they were on the donkey that was one of the worst donkeys wasn't it? remember the story he was one of the slowest donkeys what happened? what happened? the moment the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was carried the child was carried what happened? what happened to the donkey? he became the fastest there eh? as you guys in Luton say the fastest Right? He became the fastest in that space. Irrespective of who you are, it doesn't matter what your personal ability is in life. If you carry the Prophet ﷺ with you, you will become like that donkey far more and far better than any of the people that you're navigating with. You get to catch that. And the identity, and I guarantee you, you can ask these brothers here, mashallah about what it meant for them as young men to hold on to their Islamic identity. It saved them from a whole bunch of struggles when they were growing up. It gave them a strength that they had over their peers. 
and he gave them a coolness he gave them a uh, gave them a source in life while others were trying to source themselves out with the dunya these guys were dripped out with the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu yes or no it just gave you an extra beauty i'm telling you i look at you young lads here trust me there is a nur that's with you that will you will not find in the rest of your school as long as you at attend these majalis you will keep with yourself this extra level of behavior this extra amazingness it will give you strengths in ways you have no idea that's the first merkan period and when you read the seerah start acting on it and this is remember this the best thing that you can give the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is what What's the best thing that you can give the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Maulana Rumi has a beautiful poem. He says, "What do you give Yusuf? What could you give Yusuf alayhi salam? Anyone? What, do you, what would you give Yusuf alayhi salam? Hmm? Money? He's got money. What would you give him? What is it that you can offer him that he doesn't have? Uh, he's with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so we, he's fine." <laughs> We can't even offer him that. We can't just say, offer him that. <laughs> He's a prophet. What would you give him? Love. He's with Allah. He's Allah's messenger. We still can't offer him more love than he has from Allah. Maulana Rumi says, because he's the most good looking, he's got the dunya, and he's got the religion, he's got everything covered. So what is it that you offer him? Maulana Rumi says, the best thing you can offer him is you offer him a mirror. All you offer is offer him is himself. So what's the best thing you can give, you can give the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you become the most Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam version of yourself. He wants to see his teachings in your state. When he sees you with that nice beard that you never shaved, he'll be even more proud of the beard that you have. When he sees that when you wear these wonderful clothes representing the way of the of his family, he will get happy. And so on and so forth. When he sees that you're educating yourself to become strong for the ummah, he will be happier. That's the greatest gift. The second thing, and I'll, I'll realize the time is going fast. The second thing that you see. So first of all, you gotta have your personal shift. That's called the makan times. The second time. So when everybody else is not around you, how are you gonna show up? If you have the Prophet Sallallahu knowing the Prophet Sallallahu is with you, watch the difference of what what happens. The second thing is you got to understand migration. Migration means making a move. And it doesn't literally mean making a physical move, but it means in your life what sort of moves are you making? What sort how do you move in life? What sort of emigration do you do? In what places do you hang out? In what places have you moved from going from to going to? I was with a brother earlier on today who was a convert to, he's a, he's a converted to Islam. And he told me about some of the places he used to go. And he told me about, about, about how he had to make these incredible changes. He said, you cannot hang out with people who drink alcohol if you're trying to avoid alcohol. In the same manner, you cannot hang out with people who waste their time if you're trying to move from wasting your time. You cannot hang out with people who miss their prayers if you're trying to avoid missing your prayers. You cannot hang out with people who don't have the sunnah if you're trying to avoid people who don't have the sunnah. By adorning yourself with the sunnah, you have to go with those people. You have to make moves in your life. Every year I would recommend genuinely to an adult to make a move. What sort of move are you making this year for your leveling up? You have to level up. So the Prophet wasallam said the easiest way to determine this is Al-Marwa ala deeni khalilihi A person is on the religion of his friend. So you got to ask yourself if your friend's playing PlayStation all day, you will play PlayStation all day. If, play, if your friend's got a six pack, you're probably going to get a six pack. If your, if your friends make lots of money, you probably will make lots of money. And so on. But if you're, if you're hanging out with people who are not productive with their time, you won't be productive with your time. That's the second thing. You have to make the healthy movements in your life. Does that make sense, everybody? Is that clear as action points? What are you going to do for your Makkah? What are you going to do for your movement? And the last thing is Medina. How are you being a part of your society and making your society better. Muslims were not just people who stayed in their little majlis and just stayed doing their dhikr together. After you do these wonderful gatherings here, you, I'm sure you also already do this, you should be involved in more community engagement. You should be involved in your street cleanups. It's a shame that in the Muslim communities, especially in Birmingham unfortunately, I'm sure you have the similar stats here. 
some of the most uh, uh, dirtiest streets are Muslim streets. So you have to take these initiatives. What is your civic engagement? What is your societal engagement? And you young boys, don't don't sleep on this. When we were when we used to do our projects, me and Afsa back in the day in Stetford, we used to do street cleanups as a regular practice. A, a street cleanup as a regular practice. That's just one of the things you should be giving roses at during this this type of molid time to tell people about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And these guys are full of energy, so they just need suggestions. You don't even need to go out and do it, you know. Right, just send them out. And you boys, take the initiative yourselves. Remember this, you know, if you're like 16, you're five years away from Sultan Mahmud Fatih conquering Constantinople when he, when he liberated Istanbul, meaning do not underestimate your ages. Do not underestimate your ability. Have you guys read the lives of man with the kids? Yeah? If you read the lives of man, you should read the lives of man. He says, if you don't have anything to boast by by 21, you'll never have anything to boast by for the rest of your life. Makes the rest of the boys get, get a bit sad. Don't worry, lads. Teenagers is a modern phenomenon, right? So by teenage standards, you have up until 31. And if you're older than 31, 41. If you're older than 41, 41. Don't worry about it. <laughs> As is like a caravan of despair. There's always ways. But you young lads, take that on board. What can you achieve by that time? I know a brother in Birmingham who was 16. He used to do a youth program. The guy was 16 himself. And he used to do it for 13 year olds. In our, in our mosque traditions, the moment you finish the Quran, you started teaching the younger people uh, how to read the uh, uh, Alif Bata. Do not stop your Medinan. So remember this. Makkah is the personal thing. Migration are the moves you have to make in life. And Medina is your societal engagement. So I, I don't like to do just reminders without actions. Because my favorite teachers, that's why I did something and added in my bio when the Prophet was being mentioned. Why is my why am I being mentioned? Because as the great Alam Iqbal said, Ki Muhammad se to hum tere hai. Give yourself to the way of Muhammad and we pledge ourselves to you, Allah. <laughs> Allah says. You give yourself to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we will give ourselves to you. What's this world? What's this world and offer Range Rovers and Playstations? We'll give you the pen and the tablet. We'll give you a blank check. You can write what you want for yourself if you're Muhammadan. So there's three things I will tell you guys all to leave with. First of all, your obligations. How's your prayers doing? And whatever level of your prayers are in, if you're not praying your prayers, make your obligation the Meccan, the Meccan way. Because if you're not careful, if you don't, if we don't secure the Meccan uh, hearts for ourselves, then we will be sold out to the Jalik systems. Because the Jal doesn't mess around. Ask Brother Hassan about it because he works in tech. He knows about the algorithms. The algorithms. Feed off what? Off your nafs. That's why they call it a feed on social media and a YouTube feed and an Instagram feed. Why do they call it a feed? Because to them we're animals. To them we're animals and they're just grazing and grazing and feeding and feeding. So you have to learn to create the internal block so you don't get sold to whatever Instagram has to offer you. The less you feed off that crap, the more purer your hearts will be and the more better it will be when you do your Medinan engagement. Otherwise, we'll all fall apart. So three things I hope everybody leaves with. If you're not doing your prayers, if you're trying to get in the Jama'ah prayers, make that your target. Right? If you're not doing your Sunnahs, make your Sunnahs a target. If you're not doing your prayers at all, make a prayer. If you're doing two prayers a week, make three prayers a target. So you can go to the Prophet and say, Ya Rasulullah, I didn't let you down. I tried. Because you're going to have to face that day. You know what I realized? You're going to have to meet the Prophet on one day. He's going to look at you. What do you want to say to him then? You know? Did I learn your language? I wanted to hear from your word, from when you speak, I wanted to understand your words as they were said. You know? So, personal. Then the second thing, how are you moving in life? Make movements that are going to help you long term. Yeah? For your long term, for your uni, for your, for your mosque, etc. And the last one, some type of society engagement. And if these guys don't help you, don't worry about it. Believe in yourself. You can easily do this stuff. You don't have to be like a... You know when you grow up, one of the things you, you learn when you grow up is you realize everybody's just trying. The Prime Minister's just trying. Police officers just try. So be a trier. Just keep trying. Just keep trying. Alright? Inshallah, if there's anything good that I said, most certainly it was from my teachers and from my parents. If there's anything bad that I said, it's most certainly from myself. 
and from the influence of shaitan. I talk to myself and I advise myself, and then in that, may you take advice for yourselves. Well done for being in the mosque. I'm trying to bring more of your friends into the mosque as well. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Inshallah, we'll end with the closing dua and then we'll head down.